I invite you to remain standing as we read from Psalm 42 today, continuing our series of sermons entitled, So What? Today we ask the question, will I be okay? As we read the psalmist's struggle to find God, I invite you to hear these holy words. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone before me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me continually, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, we again say a word of welcome this morning to all of you. We're grateful for your presence today as we gather in this holy place at this holy time. Let's bow our heads. Oh Lord, in the silence of this moment, prepare our hearts and our minds to hear your word for us this day and work your will in our lives. Amen. He came into my office one day, very emotional, quite upset. He sat down opposite of my desk and he said, I've lost my faith. I don't believe there is a God anymore because I have known nothing but the absence of God for a long, long time. It really bothers me, he said, that I don't have faith anymore. It hurts me that I do not hear from God. Am I going to be okay? I said, I think you're going to be okay, and this is why. I believe you do have faith, and I believe God is talking to you, or this wouldn't be a burden for you. You wouldn't be emotional. You wouldn't be upset if you had lost your faith. You wouldn't care, but you care deeply. It is a big deal to you. I think it is a struggle that you're going through that many of us go through in life where we sense the absence of God. We just don't seem to hear from God. We just don't seem to see God. And we struggle. You're going to be okay. Because the Bible is filled with figures who have gone through the same thing. Many of the Psalms are written by those who cry out in some way to hear from God only to receive silence in return. The psalm writer of Psalm 42 says, God, I long for you like a deer longs for a stream of water. I feed myself from my own tears longing for you. And I ask you, God, have you forgotten me? It is that sincere, visceral kind of response to God when God seems to be so absent. 
And to make matters worse, the psalmist describes those who are mocking him when he continues to go and praise God. They say, where is your God? I think at one point in time or another, or maybe on several occasions in life, if we are honest with ourselves, we are like the psalmist and some of the great biblical figures in history. We have asked, God, where are you? Speak to me. I hear nothing. I see nothing. Are you there? And I think those are the occasions in life when we desire the presence of God on a much deeper level, and God honors that. Those are the places in which God comes to us in our desire to know God, in our struggle as we wrestle with the whole faith idea. If you look at Scripture, there are those leaders of the faith, some of the stalwarts of the faith, who in a variety of ways ask, God, where are you? Are you even there? Gideon is given the task of leading an army. But the Israelites have suffered a great deal. And when the angel of God comes to Gideon to give him the responsibility, and the angel says, and God is with you, Gideon's response is, God is with us. If God is with us, why are we going through all these difficulties and all this pain? Isaiah says, truly you are a God who hides from us. Jeremiah says, God, you are a warrior who hides and seems to be powerless. And even Jesus Christ on the cross cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? Why have you left me alone? Some of the great biblical figures have struggled with the notion of the absence of God, as does this psalm writer. And I would imagine on occasion in life, we, if we are honest, have gone through those dry spells ourselves where we wonder whether God is there. And the absence of God seems to be so penetrating. And in those moments, we would give anything to hear the voice of God, to see God at work. And I believe it is in that deep-seated desire to know God that we're going to be okay. Because God honors the fact that we long for the presence of God. And the reason we long for the presence of God is because we are created in the image of God, which means, of course, that we have this inherent, innate desire to know God at a very deep level. And when that doesn't happen or doesn't appear to happen, it becomes a struggle for us because all of us, I think, even people who say there is no God, deep down inside long to know there is something beyond all the mundane and the routine, something greater than us, something more powerful than, than all of us, and something more loving than all of us as well. And when for whatever reason we can't feel that right now, or even since that, it becomes a struggle. And we, like the psalmist, say, God, where are you? Have you forgotten me? But it is that desire to know God that makes us okay. That hunger and that pain when we sense the absence of God that makes it all okay with God. To paraphrase C.S. Lewis, he said, if you struggle with something in life, if you have this deep-seated desire for something, and that desire cannot be quenched in this life, then that means fundamentally you're created for another life. That is, there is something greater than yourself out there that can only be satisfied 
in that relationship, whatever that relationship may be. And for Lewis and for the Christian church, it is an understanding of a relationship with God in and through Jesus Christ. I remember when I was in the process for eventual ordination in the United Methodist Church, you meet with so many different committees and you write so many papers and you are interviewed so many different times and you have to describe your calling and your understanding of why it is you believe God leads you into the life of the church. And invariably, somebody says, tell us about your calling. Tell us how you went from being a college-age student with one career in mind and shifting to an understanding that now you're going to live out the rest of your adult life professionally in the church. And I so desperately wanted some kind of dramatic experience. I wanted to say I was driving down I-10 and my car levitated off of the highway. God spoke to me. Everything else froze. I had God's undivided attention and God, look, it's branded on my forehead. See, that's God's writing right there. I wanted that desperately. I didn't have that. I had this sense, this yearning, this desire, this all-knowing understanding that this is what I'm supposed to do. But it wasn't dramatic. It wasn't powerful. At least, it didn't appear to be. But it was life-changing for me. I think sometimes in our walk with our Lord, we desire something powerful and dramatic, something that is so life-changing that it is inexplicable but undeniable, where we don't struggle and we have no doubt and we don't wrestle because it's so obvious and so plain for everyone to see. We want God to come up to us in the grand and powerful way that we hear God comes to in some people. But if you look in the Bible, and if you live life, you discover for whatever reason that God wants us to struggle. God wants us to wrestle. And God wants us to work through our doubt. And more often than not, God comes to us in a still, small voice. Or God comes to us in the middle of a desert as a tiny little shrub that is burning but is not being consumed. It is not something grand for everyone to see. It is in a small, simple way. But I believe it is in those small, simple ways in which God makes God's self known to us and when we wrestle with that and struggle with that and we have a desire for God, I am convinced that means we're going to be okay because God honors that and is in the midst of all of that. One theologian said, for whatever reason, God chooses sometimes to hide himself from us so that we long to look for him. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, as an ordained clergy person, had a major faith crisis. He was confiding in one of his friends, struggling with the notion of whether or not he even believed anymore. And he said, I believe now there is an absence of faith, referring to himself. But I long for faith, he said. So his friend said to him, John, preach faith until you have it. And once you have it, you will preach faith. That is, hang in there. Keep plugging away. Don't give up. I love the fact that in this psalm, the psalmist struggling with the notion of the existence of God, God, where are you? God, have you forgotten me? Still goes with the throngs to the house of the Lord to praise God. And by the end of the psalm says, I will praise God again. It is the fundamental belief that because God never quits on us, we're not going to quit on God. Even when we can't seem to hear from God, 
Even when we can't seem to feel God right now, we're not going to quit on God. We're going to keep plugging away. We're going to keep trying. And it is in those moments, I believe, that we are absolutely closest to God, even if we don't know it. Because God comes to us in the struggle. God comes to us in the challenges. And that means we're going to be okay. I think the primary way in which we can work through anything we deal with in our spiritual walk with the Lord is the same thing the psalmist did. And that is to go with the throngs to the house of the Lord and praise God. There is something about being in the company of others who are going through the same kinds of things we are going through that give us assurance and undergird us all the more. There is something about being with people who are like us. Scripture was read a moment ago about the church. And at the end of the passage of Scripture that was read, it says, from the pen of Paul to the church at Corinth, when one member suffers, we all suffer. When one member rejoices, we all rejoice together. That means we're all in this faith journey as one. And sometimes when I'm really struggling, you're there to lift me up. And sometimes when you're struggling, I'm there to lift you up. And that's how we find God in the midst of all that. We don't do it alone. I think we all want to believe that there are those people out there fundamentally who never question, who never struggle, who always seem to have it just right. I don't think that person has ever existed. I think everyone at some point in time has to work through the faith and ask the why questions and wonder and wrestle. Henry Nouwen, the famous Roman Catholic priest, author of many books on spirituality and famous speaker, spent his adult life struggling with the presence of God. He had such a low sense of self-worth that he had this fundamental belief that God could not possibly love him. And yet he wrote about the love God has for people all the time. He lectured all the time, and he personally had his own struggles even to the point of his death and whether or not struggling with whether or not God could love him. We all know now Mother Teresa, the living saint, confided in a Roman Catholic priest early in her adult life, early in her ministry, and until her death, that she felt the profound sense of the absence of God her whole life. But now and never quit doing what he did. Because deep down inside, he knew even as he struggled that there's a God of grace and there is a God of love, even if his own struggle was going on. Mother Teresa never quit doing what she was doing, even when she felt the profound sense of the absence of God, because deep down within her core, the very existence of who she is, she knew that there is something greater than herself, and she talks about finding Christ and the wretched poor. So even some of the great saints of the church have struggled with the faith. So if we're going to struggle, why don't we not do it alone? Why don't we do it with the faith community, like the psalmist, and go with the throngs and praise our God, knowing that we're going to be okay in this process because everybody at one time or another seems to be going through what we go through every now and then. And then there are those great moments when we discover the presence of God in a powerful and mighty way. And the struggle has become worth it. And all the wrestling that has taken place internally now has proven to be worthwhile. 
I read an article this week about a university that did a study on how people could deal with pain. They asked volunteers to come in and they had buckets of ice water and they asked volunteers to put their feet down in the buckets of ice water and then to time them to see how long they could keep their feet in buckets of ice water. And interestingly enough, they determined that if someone had to do it alone, they didn't keep their feet in the ice bucket very long. But if they had a friend or somebody supporting them while they had their feet in the buckets of ice, they could keep their feet in twice as long as someone who was alone. So why not recognize that in our own walk when we struggle, when we're challenged? We can hang in there. We can keep plugging away knowing that there are those who are part of the throng, a part of the house of God who are praising the Lord with us as we wrestle and struggle and go through all of this. So when you have a conversation with someone and they're emotional and say, I think I've lost my faith. I feel the absence of God. And it really bothers me. Just tell them. You're going to be okay. Because God's in that struggle. And God is there whether you sense the presence of God or not. And if you keep plugging away and you keep trying, you're going to know that reality forever and ever. You're going to be okay. Hallelujah. Amen.